Hello and welcome to the Business of Luxury Conference 2016. We're in San Francisco and I'm joined today by Francesca Bellatini, Chief Executive of Saint Laurent. Um, last we met, you told me that you were hoping and planning to bring um, Saint Laurent from half a billion in revenues to a billion. And you've done that in a very, very short space of time with the company, obviously, and with a <laughs> large corporate kind of community around you. But what do you think the kind of foundations of your growth success have been? Well, we were able to do it because the foundations were there. Uh, when I arrived at San Laurent, I found most of the things that were built before I arrived as a very solid base to build the growth. Number one, a balanced business in terms of product categories and geographic market, an incredible brand awareness, and all of this was there even before we reform and deposition the brand. And then, thanks to the reform project and the repositioning, also the clarity brought back to the brand. And uh, maybe not exactly in 2013 when, when I arrived, but maybe not everybody has clearly understood what the reform and the repositioning meant, but clearly, the fact that that was founded on the right foundation made it possible for us to succeed because we really believed in that and because that was respectful of the original DNA of the brand. So the cleanup meant buying back licenses, it meant the rebranding, it meant getting rid of a lot of the diffusion names for the time being, turning Absolutely. it into Saint Laurent. So the, the clarity and the, and the cleaning was about kind of the all, cleaning out all of the noise. Was that also looking at the new markets from a digital point of view as well? Absolutely, because digital is clearly a very important channel in terms of both communication and business. If you talk about e-commerce, at the end of the day, it's a platform where people shop but, where shop, but also where people learn about the brand. So this is why it was very, very important to develop at the same time an e-commerce business and a digital communication that was consistent with the brand. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, obviously, is, is Hedy Simone, who came in and, and was given, was enabled to have an incredible kind of creative autonomy. I mean, do you think that's also been a kind of cornerstone of its success? Absolutely. That, for me, is a principle, creative autonomy within the brand. But more than autonomy is also trust, yeah. trusting your creative director and creative director trusting the CEO and making sure that in this relationship there is never panic. Yeah. The biggest enemy of uh, creativity is panic. So through building a trustful relationship and giving autonomy to the person that is at the creative brand, at the creative helm of the brand, you make sure that there is a situation that fosters creativity instead of killing the creativity itself. And this is what is going to continue. The difference compared to before is now that the, the brand is clear, the DNA of the brand is clear, the fashion authority is established, and this is very powerful because it's built on the foundation of the brand itself. Yeah. The brand name Saint Laurent Paris the brand name that was created by Mr. Saint Laurent in 1966 when he created the Pret-a-Porter line Saint Laurent Rive Gauche. We call it Paris because it's a more international concept. We do Pret-a-Porter, we don't do Haute Couture, which is why it's called Saint Laurent Paris and not Yves Saint Laurent. If one day we would have a do Haute Couture, of course it would be called Yves Saint Laurent. So that for me is probably the exemplification of what the, the, the reform and the repositioning means. Uh, Saint Laurent is back to be uh, a fashion authority is back to be a modern brand, and uh, and the codes of the brand are very well established. So, but seeing this transitional process um, with with um, Baccarello, I mean, presumably you want to give him the same creative autonomy, so he Absolutely. can he has to respect the kind of core, he has to respect the things that have been happening. It's like we respect the core and push for more. I think that was like James Curley's like <laughs> slogan today. But, but it's a good it's a good sort of. Point, point of view, isn't it? It's Absolutely. He will have all the creative autonomy to interpret the codes of the brand in his own language, respecting the DNA and bringing his creativity to the brand and the possibility to evolve. Because at the end of the day, luxury, the luxury industry is not static, it's an evolution. And so bringing back and evolving on creativity is what, what's going to happen to the brand under the creative helm of uh, Henry Macarena. So you say it's not revolution, it's evolution. Absolutely. But it's with a very, very strong creative vision yes. that you, you will support wholeheartedly. And that's sort of your role as the chief executive to put in the infrastructure exactly. so that everything works distribution wise and so that everyone understands at local level exactly what they're doing and so that the creative can like really forge ahead with the vision. Absolutely. Put an infrastructure that fosters creativity and make it become a business and doesn't kill it by creating panic. And also, what do you consider to be the biggest challenges now facing the luxury market in the forthcoming years? The biggest challenge is like uh, the loss of uh, confidence in the, by the consumer. The fact that consumer may not be confident as in the past to buy into luxury for all sorts of reasons. And because uh, people have like uh, different values and they, 
luxury nowadays is in competition with a lot of other things that are not necessarily the, la the luxury product. And in my view, the way to, to overcome that is to be able to uh, hire and retain talents because there will always be challenge in any industry. And the way to overcome them is to have the right people on board that know what to do and they have the talent that with passion take the brand to the next level because at the end of the day, even in a recession, you can grow if you still market share. And in order to do that, you need to have an amazing team.